Talk to me a little bit more about the carbohydrate and, and how that's affecting hydration. If I look out to, I think, some of the marketing that's out there, you have a, a range of different ideas. So you have a lot of the electrolyte companies are now promoting that they are sugar-free. Um, and then at the opposite end of the spectrum, you have a sports drink like Gatorade, which has, you know, it's loaded with with sugar. So um, you've mentioned before a 1% to 3% sort of carb solution. So how are carbohydrates um, improving hydration? And I guess how do you feel about sports drinks that have a lot of carbohydrates like Gatorade? Yeah. Okay. I'll go through the physiology of why we need carbohydrate. And then I get a little, little bit of history lesson to give again, which I love. Um, so when we're looking at how fluid is absorbed in the small intestines, like I was talking about, you have that pressure and you have a, a sodium glucose uptake mechanism and you have a fructose uh, uptake mechanism. So when you're using a little bit of carbohydrate, you're activating more of the fluid transport mechanisms across the small intestines to get fluid into the plasma space. Again, if you are just using um, sodium, then you're not going to be able to activate all of those transport mechanisms because the body is going to have to supply some glucose, which is fine when you're at rest or you're just doing resistance training. But as soon as you start doing cardiovascular type work or you're in a hot environment, you have that ischemic effect where blood is being diverted away from the small intestines to the working tissues, as well as to the skin to offload more heat. So this is where you want a little bit of sucrose because it can be broken into glucose and fructose and you want glucose because then you can activate all of those fluid transport mechanisms to maximally activate and absorb the fluid that you are drinking. And then it comes down to, okay, what is this sugar-free electrolyte tablet doing versus Gatorade, right? So this is where we come back to marketing being stronger than science. If we think back to the origins of Gatorade, and this is in the 1960s, we've pretty much all heard the Florida Gators. And for those who haven't, in the 1960s, the, there was an assistant football coach who was coaching um, the um, Flo Un University of Florida football team. He's saying, hey, you know what? All my players are having these issues and they're not staying hydrated. And his roommate was a renal physiologist. And the renal physiologist is like, you just need a little glucose and salt in that water and you're going to help your, you're going to help your athletes. So they did that. And all of a sudden the athletes weren't getting kidney stones. They weren't cramping. They were hydrating well and they were able to play better. And then they're like, oh my gosh, what is this about? So then they did a little bit of research and they started promoting it. And then it got bought by Quaker Oats. And at the same time it got bought by Quaker Oats, the FDA is like, Hey, you know what? We have to take this artificial sweetener off the market. It's not safe. And this artificial sweetener, what was, was in the original Gatorade to make it taste sweet by maintaining a 3% solution. When they took that artificial sweetener off the market, they're like, oh shit, now we have to find a way to make it just as sweet. So they put more carbohydrate in. And instead of talking about it from a hydration standpoint, we're like, we need more carbohydrate because we don't want to bonk. We don't want to hit the wall. So we need carbohydrate to keep us going. So there was a nuanced switch from hydration to supplying carbohydrate for performance. So then we're seeing this marketing spin and then research coming out after the formula had already changed. So the research was coming out about carbohydrate availability because now we're getting into, you know, the upsurge of marathons, not wanting to hit the wall. What do we do? We want to have liquid carbohydrate to help us with performance. It's nothing to do with hydration. But everyone thinks, oh, I need this sugary drink to keep hydrated and keep going because you hear the marketing claims, you know, Gatorade does the body good because it hydrates us. And we see um, professional athletes slamming it down but the research doesn't support it. It supports carbohydrate availability, but it doesn't support hydration from it. And the pendulum swings the other way. And we see all of these sugar-free electrolyte tablets with stevia or um, xylitol or some other sugar alcohol because people are like, oh, I don't want any sugar. I don't want sugar. I don't want sugar, but I need electrolytes for hydration. But it's still, it's not optimal because you need a little bit of that glucose to help with that fluid absorption. So it's kind of somewhere in the middle. 
Yeah, so it's a, it's a fluid that has that 1% to 3% carb solution. And then separate to that is the discussion, it seems, around carbohydrate intake for performance as a distinct, yes. a distinct topic in and of itself, aside from hydration. Yep, um, exactly. Exactly. 